Well, Prohibition set back the culture of creating cocktails and bar culture in general in America. Somehow, miraculously almost, several of the best drinks from the pre-Prohibition era have still managed to be around today. And today we're going to talk about my personal favorite of those, the Clover Club. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome to My Card Reviews. My name is Mike, I'm one of the bartenders at the Hilton Gardens Inn in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And today we're going to talk about a pre-prohibition cocktail that was invented in New York around the turn of the 20th century uh, at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel, uh, the Clover Club. So the Clover Club is a gin sour variation, essentially, that uses flavored syrup to add an extra dimension, a little bit of extra sweetness, and a little bit of extra just... I, I suppose intrigue is the word, you know, the way to phrase it. And we're going to make one on the show today. So the fun thing about the Clover Club is that it is a essentially a standard gin cocktail with the addition of a flavored syrup that also includes an egg white, egg white to give it sort of like a creamy, velvety kind of thing, similar to what we talked about in my previous episode where I showed off my uh, my new drink, the Garden of Eden. Uh, what, what makes this drink kind of, uh, almost kind of difficult to do correctly is that the recipes you find online call for raspberry syrup. Well, I've got one here today. This is definitely not the right uh, the right raspberry syrup. Really what you want is just a standard flavored syrup component. You know, something along the lines of like a, like a Monin um, or Soda Stream syrup kind of thing. Something that is sweet like a simple syrup, but has the addition of a flavor of that whatever you want a component. So whether you're going to try it with your know, apple or raspberry as we're going to use here. Um, you want something that's just very basic. You don't need something super extra. What I've got here instead is actually a super fruit syrup from Kodiak Cakes, the people who make those high protein uh, pancake mixes. Um, this is definitely not the right stuff to use. I can already tell you that right now. And I mean, hey, it might still work, um, but this is definitely not what you want to go for. This is just what I managed to find. And that's kind of the problem with this, this drink as a whole. Unless you were going to make your own raspberry syrup, you're going to have kind of a hard time finding it yourself. And it's not difficult to make. It's just, you know, equal parts by weight of water and sugar and then the addition of like a handful of clean raspberries. Let that simmer, let that those raspberries break down, stir it all together, uh, strain out the uh, whole pieces of fruit, bottle it, and you're good to go. Um, I just didn't have time to do that, so I went for a pre-produced option to see how that would work. Just fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this a shot and just get right into making this. Give it a quick taste, let's go. All right, so we've got all of our ingredients more or less lined up here, uh, essentially in their you know order of usage. It's, this drink's very, very simple. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. It's just a matter of the one specializing ingredient does take a bit to find. We're gonna start off with our shaker here and this is going to be uh, the first time I'm going to brew this properly. Uh, we're gonna have to dry shake this. So we're gonna leave this without ice as we build the drink. At our jigger here, we're gonna go for uh, two ounces of a London dry gin. Now, this is not a particularly good London dry gin, money. This is Burnett's, it's cheap. La, low brow gin, but it does have a very strong juniper flavor, which I think is really important here. You don't want a gin that's going to be more towards the peppery side. You're going to want something that's heavier on the juniper, maybe heavier on citrus notes, but you want to keep those key flavors in mind when you make the drink. We're going to start off by adding two ounces of this to our shaker. As with most drinks, two ounces is, you know, a pretty safe amount. Do I think you could use a, you know, a, a more peppery gin, like aviation or uh, Seagram's here and have that, you know, still work? Probably. Um, I think it just kind of depends on the remainder of your ingredients. Um, there's a lot to consider there with what notes you're going to accentuate with each gin once you put it into a drink. Uh, and much like any other spirit, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to essentially give you a solid idea of what they're going to do without having examined it myself. So our next ingredient is the Kodiak raspberry syrup. Now, like I said, this is not the right syrup to use. I mean, honestly, obviously you're going to want to go for something more like uh, a cocktail syrup, like a simple syrup flavored with raspberry or a drink or soda syrup flavored with raspberry rather than um, what is essentially just a pancake topping. However, there are some bourbon based drinks that do in fact call for maple syrup. And I figured the consistency and the sugar content of something like this, which is, you know, more natural, more uh, just raw fruit flavors, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about that as much if you went for something that was a bit more natural. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill up half an ounce here. I'm gonna do this before our lemon juice because this is essentially taking place of our simple syrup. I wanna be able to wash out the, um, wash out, the, whew, Whoa, what? Whoa, what is that? I took a sniff of the syrup. 
see what it smells like. It's very, very potent, fresh raspberries. Um, I'm fairly certain this is essentially what I was talking about when I said you could make your own. It's just not like filtered, so it still has like fruit particles in it. This is definitely something you could probably actually use now that I think about it. It is very potent though, so we'll see what that does to the flavor. But as I was saying, yeah, um, you know, start with the syrup, pour that in, and then we'll pour in our uh, lemon juice, which is the last component of this drink, as it is a sour. Like I said in my last video, I use real lemon and real lime, lime juice and lemon juice um, for our drinks. Uh, technical foul, technically, uh, you could make the argument that these are, you know, inferior quote-unquote ingredients. Uh, I think that's unfair to say. I think these are perfectly capable um, juices, especially because they are 100% lemon, 100% lime, you know, just with the added added preservatives so you can keep them a lot longer than you could regular produce. I don't know. I don't see too huge an issue with it. I think it's a bit overstated, uh, but we'll toss that in there. Now, I have made this drink a couple times before, and every time that I've made it, I've actually made it using uh, cran raspberry juice and simple syrup as opposed to... Uh, a flavored syrup. And the reason why I did that was not only because I could not find at the time a raspberry syrup, but also because uh, the addition of like a cran raspberry flavor gives it a more bold, balanced taste. Uh, whereas like just straight raspberry could be sweeter depending on what your syrup is like. Um, and with the addition of that juice and then the simple syrup, it just comes out light, frothy, bright, tastes really good. That is also a valid option, I think. You know, I, I think that is a perfectly acceptable way to go about this. Last but not least, we're gonna take one whole uh, egg and we're gonna crack the egg white into it like we did with the Garden of Eden in the last episode. Uh, hopefully this table's hard enough to... No, it's not. <laughs> the table's not gonna harden over time, Mike. I don't know why he thought that was gonna be the case. I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully get this into a spot where I can do this comfortably. Get that egg white in there. Just the most important thing is to avoid getting any shell and avoid getting any egg yolk in there. Those are the two key things you gotta do here. It looks like it's actually most, if not all, of the egg white. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are basically ready to go ahead and shake this now. All we gotta do is put a lid on it and get going. Now, when you dry shake something, you're gonna wanna be very careful um, because what you're doing there is emulsifying that egg white and it's turning it into a froth by sort of breaking down and separating the proteins in the egg white. Um, to get that effect. And in order to get there, you have to shake it a good amount. But because it's doing that, it's also expanding the total mass of what is in this shaker. So it is going to want to expand on you. So with, depending on the size or shape of your shaker, you're gonna to wanna to get one hand on top, one hand on bottom. And in a three piece, I actually wrap my hand around this top cap, uh, thumb down on the top and then hand on the bottom, and then shake it like that, just to make sure it doesn't break it open. Let's get the dry shake done. <laughs> Okay, shook that for a while because I had a pretty sizable egg white. Now before I open this up, I do want to show you something. <laughs> Whoa, Dolly. Oh, there it was. Like I said, the pressure builds up in these pretty heavily once you start shaking them dry. That one, actually the second I took my hand off the bottom, the lid shifted just enough to pop open like that and you just spray just the faintest amount of drink onto my hands and down the sides of the shaker. That is a noteworthy thing. It's going to happen. Be prepared for it. It's actually why I prefer using this kind of shaker because what it enables me to do is get, with the small size, get my hands all the way around it, hold it together tighter, and then uh, take just the top cap off to release the pressure, put it back on, open up the second one, add the ice. So now I'm gonna get my ice, and we're gonna go ahead and do a cooling shake on that. Okay, so that's some ice here. I'm gonna use the traditional Dave Arnold, uh, Dave Arnold method of uh, one large cube of ice whole into the glass for agitation, and then one uh, block broken for chilling and dilution. Uh, I honestly think actually you could probably shake it with a syrup like this that's like super potent and fresh tasting, or at least fresh smelling, um, over whole cracked ice just to get more dilution in there and kind of loosen up that uh, flavor. Before I go into a shake, I'm gonna pour it directly after I have this wide open top couth, coop, excuse me. It actually has some water stains on it somehow. That's new. If I gotta get better at producing the show. But yeah, I have this uh, wide top coupe and I'm pouring into there. You can pour this into any coupe style drink or even a sour glass actually, that'd be equally as appropriate. Uh, could you put this in a highball, turn it into a fizz by adding some club soda? Absolutely. Uh, that's definitely something I think I should try. But today we're just gonna focus on the original style. We're gonna give this a shake. There we go. Now, if there's ever a question about how much you should shake, to whatever temperature you want. I prefer my drinks ex exceptionally cold, so they are exceptionally refreshing, at least in my opinion. 
Uh, so I shake until my hands start to feel almost a little bit sore from the cold. Just the slightest bit of that starting to set in. I'm gonna pour this into our poop. Feel free to give it a light little shake as you do it. And what I'm noticing actually is this is remarkably hazy, which is not normal. It's also not very red, which is odd. Normally with raspberry syrups, like a regular raspberry syrup, this would come out a substantially more red color, but we're getting a more light pink beige color. And that will steadily become more prominent, that pink color will come through a bit more as that egg white starts to foam the head, but for now, it is still very much, very, very much, in fact, cloudy. Alrighty, so we've made our drink, we've got it here in our glass. I'm not gonna garnish this, I don't have anything available to garnish it with, but you could do uh, a couple of raspberries speared onto a, just a little skewer, toss that into the drink. Maybe a sprinkle of nutmeg across the top could be interesting, like a spiced berry sort of thing. That, that's definitely not an unapproachable thing to do. Um, a lemon wedge or a lime wheel would both look nice. Uh, the lemon would complement the lemon in the drink, the lime would contrast the color of the drink, so that would not be a bad call. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is turning a slightly more pink color on the bottom. It is still very muted in color, though. It is still very much uh, grayed out, so to speak. So let's give this a taste and see how this goes. Ooh, ho oh, oh. ho. Ah, that's a lot of raspberry. That's that's a lot of raspberry. That's more raspberry than I was expecting. <laughs> so, what I'm getting immediately is like this bright citrus and ju juniper note coming from the gin. That's followed very quickly by this raspberry flavor. And it's working. I think it works pretty well. It's just very potent, very bright in your face. Uh, kind of flavors here. It, it, that raspberry comes in and then it stays there and it turns into almost like a strawberry, blueberry, mixed berry kind of flavor, which is interesting. The longer it sits in my mouth, and then there's the juniper again a little bit, actually. I think it's playing on the juniper and the gin to kind of, you know, extend its evolution and produce something more than just raspberry, which I think is actually quite interesting. The egg white's a definite necessity. I think I'm gonna put more than a normal amount of egg white into this drink because that egg I had was surprisingly like full and a shocking amount of egg white in there. But it's working. It is making it creamier. It is making it kind of reminiscent of a sorbet almost. That immediate creaminess is like mitigating in a way some of that really sharp raspberry flavor that's coming from the syrup I chose. Yeah, it's interesting. Bright lemon, juniper, raspberry comes in. Starts tasting like other berries, yeah. It's like an evolved uh, gin sour that is playing on the evolution of berry with juniper to produce new flavors. Which I think is really cool. I think that actually works super well. Honestly, don't know if I want to recommend it or not. My, my problem with the way I made this drink is that I did it wrong. I, I did this very wrong. This is, this is a pancake syrup, for sure. This is a syrup you put on very dry, healthy, like buckwheat pancakes. This is not a syrup for making drinks with. Although I will say that the ingredients are reminiscent of that of a simple syrup as immediately it's just uh, red raspberry puree, cane sugar, water, uh, pectin and xanthan gum to thicken and then citric acid. I think the inclusion of that citric acid is what's making this so much brighter than a regular uh, like enhanced simple syrup. And that might be why it's almost kind of fighting for dominance with the other flavors. The gin I, I chose, this Burnett's gin I'm using, is very, very, uh, well, it's cheap. So it's got like a pretty strong, and that's not to say it's bad, it's a quite good gin for how cheap it is. But it's got this really strong, prominent, bitter juniper flavor. Um, and it, it's like really bold, really in your face. And normally when you mix it with something, it kind of pulls that back. Here, that raspberry is fighting for dominance with those juniper flavors, which is almost more interesting. But I think it might be better to just use a regular syrup because you get a more reliable result that's a bit more smooth, a bit less in your face, a little bit less loud, which is more or less what I think this drink is supposed to be. I mean, when you think about a cocktail, like hotel cocktail specials, you know, it's quick and easy stuff that staff can make easily, but it's also stuff that's easily enjoyable and accessible to any guest who comes down to the bar. Working in a hotel myself, you know, when you think about a special, you're like, oh yeah, I can make you a super complicated cocktail. Like, um, for example, I actually had a special called the Brum Sorbet a little while ago. It's actually pretty popular. People really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. But the number of ingredients and the process you had to go through to make it made it slow. And then the second special I came up with called the Donkey, which I'll get back to on another episode, maybe. Um, 
that is, you know, it's quicker. It's fewer ingredients, it's simpler stuff, it's more familiar flavors, it's easily accessible. This is something that is very, very quick, very, very easily accessible. And if you're in a proper bar, you're going to be making your own simple syrup anyway. So a raspberry simple syrup wouldn't be hard to come by or do yourself, actually. So, yeah. You know, it's got kind of a soapy flavor to it with the juniper in there and the berries. It tastes kind of like a homemade soap from like a small art artsy kind of artsy fartsy kind of shop. It's not a bad way. It's it's just very it's very clean tasting. It's very it's not muddled down by all these flavors in your mouth. It's actually working quite well. It's only three o'clock. I probably shouldn't finish this, but I might finish this anyway. It's very good, with the exception of the syrup being kind of in your face. I wonder if the thickeners in there are what's causing it to be so. Um, prominent a flavor too. I wonder if that's playing a, a role in here somehow. But yes, that was the Clover Club. A classic, honestly, actually, and one that I don't think really needs any um, any changes on. Could you swap out the syrup for something different? Could you do like maybe apple and swap it for lime juice? Yeah, you could try that. Could you do like blueberry instead? Oh yeah, absolutely. Could you use a flavored gin, like a Slows gin or, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Luxardo makes like a sour cherry gin. Could you try that? Yeah, actually, I think the sour cherry gin would be pretty good. I think it'd be abrasingly sweet, you want to pull back on the syrup, maybe up the uh, lemon juice quantity, or maybe just add more gin, two and a half ounces maybe, but um, you've there, there, there are options that you can change almost anything about that and have a respectable gin sour, but that is, in my eyes, the best way to do it, the way it is now, just as is, very simple, very clean, uh, very sippable. Like it's, the more you sip it, the more you're like, ah, oh, fruit flavors and citrus and Juniper, it's very, it's just relaxing. It's a relaxing drink is what it is. It's a good day sipping drink for a lunch menu at a hotel, which is more or less what it was for. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a quicker episode than the last one. The last one took substantially longer to edit. Hopefully this one's a bit easier. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to click that like button down below and subscribe with the notifications on so you know when I get to make my next video. I'm shooting for every single Saturday, which so far I'm managing to uphold pretty easily, so... Uh, without a doubt, we will be able to continue this with relative ease. Is a drink you guys want me to see me cover? You know, talk about some of the history behind it, you know, give it a look at it, make one, give it a tasting, see what see what it's all about. If you go ahead and throw it down at me at the comments below, or uh, add me on Twitter, at MikeHardReviews. Uh, if you go there, you can shoot me a DM or tweet at me, and we will cover it. I'll do my best to respond as best I can. So, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, Stay tipsy.